Hi, Crafty Patty here. Today I'm making bento bags. And you say, what is a bento bag? It's a reusable cloth bag that you can use for almost anything. This particular bag, I've got my knitting in. And it's handy because I can just pull out the yarn, tie it up, and take it with me. And I'm ready to go. There's so many things you can use these bento bags for. You can make them in different sizes, so you can make them one for lunch bag. And make one for putting gifts in, and then you've got a reusable um, bag, you don't have to use paper. I'm going to be showing you two ways to fold the bento bag. I'm also going to be showing you how to do a raw edge for those that like a real natural look. I'm going to be showing you how to do a seamed edge. I'll show you how to line one. And I'll show you on how to make a handle. So lots of ways to make bento bags. Stay tuned and let's get started. I've cut 11 inches wide by 33 inches long. So when you're cutting your pieces, you always times your width times three by your length. So 11 times three is 33. If you wanted this 10 inches times three, 30 inches for your length. 9 times 3, 27, and so on. This is how you can make different size bags. Stitch around so it prevents it from raveling somewhat in the wash, and we'll sew about a quarter inch all the way around. So I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine. You get to the corner, come up to about the quarter inch line, lift your foot, pivot, and back down, and sew along your straight edge. Now that we've got our mark, we know that we're bringing this edge over to there. About three eighths of an inch just past our first stitch line and we'll start with the back stitch again and we'll sew along this edge and back stitch now I'll take it back to the board and I'm going to show you how we make our next fold this is our stitched edge here. We're just going to flip that up, put it out of the way. We're now going to bring this edge over and there's our line. So we know that's exactly our third and it matches up to my little line here. And then just pull that out so it doesn't get caught up. And we'll take that to the sewing machine and sew along this edge. Just 
Doesn't look like much yet, does it? But take your two corners, open them up, and we now have our mental bag. What I would suggest doing, because this is a raw edge bag, is just reinforcing this area here. So I'm going to take it back to the sewing machine and do a little bit of a zigzag right here to make sure we've got a nice strong corner. So I have my seam facing up. So we're going to sew it with that up. We're going to come in, so we're coming down to this way. So I'll insert my needle just at the top here. I'm setting it just past the buttonhole stitch, which is about at a 0 0.5. And I'm using, for my width, about 1.5. Because it's a zigzag, you probably shouldn't need to back stitch because it's a pretty tight stitch. So there you have your very basic bento bag with raw edges, ready to take shopping. Pop a few in your grocery bag, open it up, pop in your produce, take it to the scale, they'll weigh it up for you. Tie it up. Voila. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I can read your mind. You're thinking, why would anybody want a bag with raw edges? They'll just unravel. Well, some people love that look. But me, I like a nice finished look. So now we're going to make our next bag with finished edges. It is so much easier to sew a seam when you've got it ironed and you won't need pins. ends are a little bit thicker so you might want to come in and just place one pin in your corners just to hold it in place. Now I'm going to be taking this to the sewing machine and sewing along this edge of my fold. I'm going to sew along the one long side up the bottom here and I'm going to stop here because I want to confirm that I definitely have the exact thirds because if we don't have three equal sections, the fold will not work. And I'm sewing more to this edge than I am to the outside edge just to keep it secure. And I'm bringing my fabric down like this. It just helps to keep this nice and taut while you're sewing. I'm not pulling really tight, but it just enough. It just helps to keep your sewing nice and flat. And coming up to the corner here, I'm just going to take that pin out and ease my way up to that corner. As soon as I get close, I'm going to lift my pressure foot up and make sure that fabric is tucked underneath the pressure foot to hold it in place. Ease it up into the corner. You might want to just use the hand of the sewing machine, bring it up, lift your pressure foot, pivot it around, drop your pressure foot, continue sewing. So my finished width, it looks like about nine and three quarters, but when I pull it, it's about 10 inches. So with that formula, we always have to have our width times three, which is 30. So we've got to have 10 by 30 for it to work. Right now, I'm sitting at 31 and a half. So I'm going to be cutting off 
about half an inch. Then I've got my quarter inch fold, quarter inch fold to make it come to 30 inches so we've got our perfect formula. Okay, so I'm just measuring, so I'm gonna cut this amount off. So when I do my quarter inch fold and quarter inch fold, I'll end up at 30 inches for my finished edge. So we'll just take this off. I'll actually iron this first over and over and then we're going to be at the perfect 30 inches. We have all our seams sewn. Now we want to put the right side up. You're going to take this corner and bring it down to the other side, holding a triangle. Now we're going to take this corner and bring it up to the side, making a triangle. Now what we're going to do is if you turn it like this, it might be a better visual for you. Because now what we're looking for is this line here. That's our fold line. So we're bringing it down like so. And now we've got our bento shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this side and this side, bring it together, and this is going to be our sewing seam. Alright, so before we flip it, I'm just going to put a couple more pins in here just so it holds it in place. Now we're going to flip it. And now we're going to put these seams together. So just bring it up. Two seams together. And pin it in place. And then once you've got your corner, your actual seams pinned, take out those extra pins and let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the seam and the seam. We're going to make sure, you can see that this one fold, has folded over. So we're gonna make sure this one's folded over as well. So once we get to this little intersection here, with the crossovers of the fabric, we're gonna go sew right past that, keeping this seam to this side, and we're gonna just stitch that down. And again, you might have to give it a little pull to get it to go over. So I'm going to grab onto this piece of fabric and onto this side. And if I have to, I can give it a little bit of a tug to get over the excess fabric. Now continue along. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be pulling on my fabric this way. And you're gonna sew down as far as you can go. Side nicely sewed down now. It just makes a nice clean edge on the inside of your bag. Now we're gonna do the same for the other side. So again, you can see how this edge is already 
pulled over to this side, which is forcing this seam to go over as well. So we're going to continue that seam, fold it over. We're going to work our ways all the way down, the same as the other side. Right now our bento bag has pointed corners. That's how we made our first bag. But what you can do is you can just cut those back so you've got more of a box bottom. First, we need to bring it to the wrong side. All right, so you've got your corners again. And now you've found your square right here, the corner of your square. You can turn it this way to make it easier for viewing. And now with my pen, I'm going to mark off the three inch point here and a three inch point here. Take my ruler and join the outside to the outside and draw your sewing line. If you want, you don't have to, but when this is on the inside of the bag, it will be kind of flopping around and loose. So you, you can choose to leave it like that if you want to, or you can sew it down. So smooth out your fabric, make sure there's no buckling underneath that section. Fold down your triangle, pin it in place. Now we're going to go back to the machine and sew along the two lines. So this is the first bag we made with the raw edges and we cut this piece 11 by 33 inches. We cut this one the same size but because we've turned over the edges and we've done the box corners this is the size we get from 11 by 33. But now this is the perfect little size for lunch bag. So because we've got the little box corners, it makes it perfect to pop in a salad, your pork, maybe a bar, or whatever you like for your lunch. Bring up your corners. And there's your tie. And you're ready to go for your little lunch bag. And it, it isn't actually really necessary to actually do a double tie in that. It's really quite strong just with one tie. But if you want to, you could still get one more tie out of it if you so desired. And now you've got a very secure little bag. So cute. Okay, I promised a reversible bento bag and we're gonna get a little bit fancy dancy here. And I've got some leftover scraps of fabric. This is a great way to use them. And if you've got about a 12 and a half by 12, 12 and a half inch square, then this will work perfectly. First thing we're gonna do is bring right sides together. I don't think you need to watch me sew this. I'm just gonna sew down just a straight stitch, one quarter inch. This seam has been sewn for a quarter inch. We'll open that one up. And now bring right sides to right sides again. And we'll now sew 
these two seams together. Alright, so we're all pinned in place and now we're ready to take it to the machine and again we're going to be doing a small quarter inch seam all the way around leaving a three inch opening right here. Now we've got it all ironed, so I'm going to go back to the machine and just so we sew up our opening, I'm going to go around and sew close to the edge and top stitch all the way around. Now cut a scrap piece of fabric, something that will complement your bag colors, and this is going to be the handle. So I've cut it six inches by 10 inches. So this is the edge that has been sewn. We're going to just flip that out of the way, bring this in, folding over right to our fabric mark. And when you get to the corner, just open it right up so you're not catching the fabric in there. And that take to the machine and we're going to sew down this side. Those are our sewed edges here and here, and then find your triangles, your two corners, open it up, and there you have your bento bag shaping. And like on the other bags, I want that nice clean edge. So this one is automatically wanting to come over as you can see. So we've got a nice corner here so I'm going to fold that one over. So we're going to bring it around the other side and I'm going to bring it over about a quarter inch same as my seam and we're going to work our way from the top sewing it all the way down and then forcing this to come over to this side and just tag it in place in this with the sewing machine.
end. Your last step is to open up the little handle you made and we're going to poke this triangle right through. There it is. And now we're going to take these two corners, we're going to put them together, and we're going to sew right across. I reinforce it and sew from this corner to this corner now. We're just going to pull our handle back over the center and it's also reversible. And you've got the light green on the other side. One last thing to do, I'm going to come in here and just reinforce this corner so it stays nice and strong. I'm just going to zigzag, zigzag down a little bit right here on both sides. We started with showing you how to do a raw edge bento bag. Then we went into showing you how we can do the hems and it makes a smaller bag, perfect for lunch. Remember those lunch items we put in that bag? Well, I got so hungry, I ate most of it. <laughs> and my last one, another bag, bento bag, making into the handle, and it's also reversible, and I can use this for my shopping bag. Yeah, I know, it doesn't quite match my outfit, right? It matches limes, matches apples. I'm going shopping. I hope you enjoyed that video. Lots of information there. Make lots of mental bags, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.